Unleash Your Creativity with Your Micro Welder, Episode 8. We're going to make small hearts and I'm going to use wire here. I have 24 gauge half heart. I like half heart because it retains its shape more easily. You don't have to have that because you can work hard in it. Um, you can first shape the way you want and then hammer all sorts of possibilities. But what we're going to do is because they're small also, I'm going to use eyeball it this much wire it's about an inch and three quarters if you are doing a pair I find that it's always easiest to cut them at the same time okay there we have that first order of business is taking it and bending like this. So I've got the pair and I like to do this part or use a marker to mark both. That way you're, you're gonna have a pair that looks the same. And you know what? It doesn't even have to look the same. I find the asymmetry is great or anything that is handwork done. Okay, so marked it. I've, I'm pinching them in like this. And I've got the first part. There we go. And now we're starting, this is the base of, this is not the point of the heart, but where it goes round. I'm gonna show you. This is in fact, not the point, but this part, like here. And what I'm gonna do now is to split them like this, split the sides, and then hold on to it, wrap. One side. I'm, I, I want it asymmetrical, but if you want a symmetrical, much easier if either you eyeball or do a pen mark or mark your pair of pliers. And these are round nose pliers. They're inexpensive. So I'm going to make them a little, this side smaller and do this. Okay. Now you've got a little heart. And I like it marked up so that it's not so perfect. So I'm gonna just change that. And I'm gonna show you this now. But basically, if you don't want the point to be right below and you want it that way more, all you have to do is move that over here, move that over here, and there. So whatever you decide to do, the steps, it is much better and easier to do on both sides. So you see here, I like how this curves in as opposed to straight. And that is easy to do when you just hold on to this bottom part like this or the bottom like this and push it in. Now, I find that it is easier to weld that first and then manipulate. But whatever happens, mark down here where exactly you end for both right and left if you want them to be the same size. It is much easier to use this. I'm looking at this, the top is almost done, but the bottom here is not as curved. So I'm gonna continue doing this until I'm kind of happy with the way they are. 
So it is more important the length rather than the curvature because the length, you can't do a whole lot. Although you can still correct it later, the curvature is easy to maneuver later. So here we are ready to weld. Oh, what I've got here is I've used a marker and I marked where I want. That looks pretty even. Yeah, so that's where the mark is right here. And all I need is two millimeters away from it. You don't need a lot because it's going to roll back the ball. And then what I'm going to do is if these pairs of pliers are not strong enough and you want it to twist, I always have another pair holding that. So like this. it like such and then now I am ready to weld okay so here's the point I'm going to weld at 9 watts and this is 24 gauge basically I want this to ball I'm gonna see if you can see that close up there you go so it balled. Now, let me find the other one and see if I like that situation. Now, okay, so this is shorter than this one. And I don't like this. All I have to do is hold on to it. I can cut it, but I maybe I won't cut it. Let me see. And the other one had opened up when I was welding. So that is why it didn't come to a skinny point. I'm going to do this. Would have been probably easier for me to just weld it and then trim. But here we go. Like that. And it's much easier when I'm when you're doing earrings to do whatever you do on the right to do at the left at every single step as opposed to several steps and then moving on to the same thing on the other side. Okay. Okay. The length is similar. Let's see. That's good. And then this, all you have to do is I'm squeezing it hard to make sure that it goes in is you just open it up a little bit and you can use this or a skewer or something to wedge it open a little bit more and there let me see I think I like that now they look different because that one has been cleaned and oftentimes when you've been handling, you've got hand creams, etc., and you're working with it, it will oxidize more even if you're using argon gas and you can just clean that off later. And again, doing it at the same time really is better. So now we're ready to weld the post. I'm gonna take a moment and talk about the stud posts. Okay. So there are posts that are like this, got a little notch and stuff like that, and it's nicely rounded. And then you have ones with a base. If you're soldering, you don't need a base. Um, and you can, because you just put flux and solder and it's very easy. You don't need bulk. I have found that if you are welding, this is especially useful because it does not, welding does not 
use any sort of solder, you want something to melt and grip onto it. Otherwise, when you're welding, it is really tricky for it to fuse perfectly together without weakening the post. So, when if you are purchasing any sort of posts for welding, always get the ones with a base. Just makes life a lot easier. However, say if you cannot access that, you could what what you can do is use low power weld the tip and ball it so that there's more silver or more metal and then basically you are creating your own base now we are ready <laughs> just remember that make sure if one side it if your piece is asymmetrical one side is bigger than the other that you remember to have right and left so to make sure because i actually had it this way it looks just looks to me like it ought to be like that but anyway flip it to the side and select and we are ready to weld like this now the other thing is either you hold on to it with a pair of pliers if you were soldering, you would have a third arm. Or if you wish not to hold on to it with a pair of pliers, um, or whatever reason, this is actually a really useful tool. So basically you clip onto it, get it down to where you need to go. It's just, the third arm is a useful thing to have when you are by yourself and you're welding. Okay. Next thing I want to talk about is I really like my ADL and I was welding on it because it had a light. The problem is with welding for jewelry making, I'm going to show you, this is what happens. You get, um, it has high heat or whatnot and you might make a mark here or burn through and it's not a big deal but what you can easily do to show you is to have this is what i use for soldering um a stone and sometimes they call it the soldering plate soldering stone but basically and it could be made of quartz and whatnot. Basically, it is something that dissipates heat, doesn't crack, and um, it protects your your table or whatnot. Okay, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna try to find a clean area to weld so that you can see this. Basically, I've got it at nine Actually, I'm gonna put it to maximum 10 watts. I'm using the Orion Impulse, but 10 watts, you could achieve that with Zap and also the Orion permanent, the PJ. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold on to it and you, I want to weld here. Don't worry that this is bigger than this surface area because that is going to melt soon. It fused to the point of the heart. Okay, like this. Now, the other thing is if your wire is irregular in length, you might want to just flatten it a little bit. Um, otherwise, this is good. And I just want to go over once again that you basically want to weld here at an angle oops at an angle like this so that you're melting the base onto the 
bottom. Do not weld on the shaft and melt it. And welding without the base touching is not as desirable. So basically, we want this to melt downward and also holding it straight is best up and down like this. The first weld, don't worry if it's crooked like this because you're gonna, we're going to do it all the way around and you straighten out in the end. And I'm not sure how I can... I'm going to film in a different, from a different angle to show you, but let's see. That base melted down. You see that? We're going to continue on doing that. Balled up. And I'm going to do it from every single angle. And I'm going to do from the top of the base downward at an angle like this. And do not worry that it breaks off just, just yet. And as you go, Try to straighten out and pressing down instead of taking it off. That way it helps with the metal flow and you can correct along the way. That has melted. Okay. And you might have to go around little bit more than once because you're pushing the metal around at the, the flow of the melted metal so already it is is done and i'm going to clean off some of that and make sure that it is the way you want it. I'm going to weld and then wash. So what I did, and I cleaned it off very easily with a um, brush and a bit of hand soap and water. Now, there's some parts, and there'll, there'll be parts like that, where because you've got all sorts of little crevices, and if you want, you can polish it with a nail file or a pick or something to clean out the, um, the sides. But over time, as you wear it, it's fine. And I find that sometimes if it bothers me, I use more of a an eraser that, that can take away some of the grime. Um, and there you have this. I'm gonna show it on the model. I hope you found that episode to be interesting. And if you did, please like and subscribe and comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And actually it helps the algorithm. I'm a wholesaler of premium quality chains and findings as well as micro welders. I'm going to leave a note below a little bit more information about our company and what you've seen in this video.